In this video, we'll talk about whether or not you need a foreground, middle ground, and background in all your images. This is one of those things that can be a little bit dogmatic. It's often advice that you get as an aspiring artist. Put a foreground in your images. Where's your foreground? Where's your middle ground? Where's your background? Now, I've actually found that thinking about these things as I'm completing and you know thinking about my thumbnailing process, planning my images, is really important. I've often found that my images were not as good as they could be because I wasn't putting in these simple elements and thinking about the depth in my scene. But I also noticed that in many cases, a lot of the art that I really liked didn't always have a foreground, middle ground, and background. And some of the strongest imagery is a lot more graphic and it doesn't really have that depth. So it's made me look into this issue a little bit more. And what I wanna do in this video is just share with you some of these thoughts mostly through just looking at art and talking about it and discussing where we see foreground, middle ground, background elements, how you can include this in your own work and you know how you can think about how the style of art that you wanna make relates to this fundamental concept of composition, foreground, middle ground, and background. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney, I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years and on this channel we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration now if you want to learn more about line and color illustration the style that i use to create all of my comic books and most of my concept art and professional work to date you can check out my free quick start guide it's aimed to get you up and running quickly in photoshop with your own simple reliable line and color process it's free, the link will be in the description, go check it out. So as I said, this can often feel like a bit of a rule, right? Do you need to put a foreground in? Do you need to put a middle ground in, etc., etc. I've actually found that this is one of these complicated things where I frequently have found that my images work a lot better when I think this way and when I plan for foreground, middle ground, background. I find that mostly it makes things easier to make sure that there is depth within the scene to really formalize my thinking process this way, to start my planning process this way. Especially if you want something to feel epic, to feel as if it is a scene, to feel as if there's depth there. Again, simple explanation of foreground, middle ground, background is that, uh, you know, again, you know, if I sort of put my fist towards the, the, the frame, that really is gonna be in the foreground. But again, my face is in the middle ground and the sort of background that's a little bit more blurry is the background, the desk behind me. Um, but if I don't have anything in the foreground, then it really is just kind of a face um, with a background behind me. And um, again, it, it's a matter of telling this depth and this sort of complexity of what's going on. And it's a matter of sort of what kind of story and imagery do you want to create? Um, the more I wave my hands around, the more it creates a sense of overlap within this composition. The more I sort of do this, the more it, sends a, it creates a sense of dimensionality. That may be what you want, that may not be what you want. A lot of people sort of comment that, again, I wave my hands around a little bit too much. Either way, you don't always need a foreground, middle ground, background. Let's just say that to begin with. But I have found, as I said, especially when you're trying to create depth, and especially when you're trying to make it clear that the middle ground, which is a long way from you, is sort of faded with atmospheric perspective, you really do need that foreground element to kind of tell that story, right? You could also think about this is in terms of the blur, the camera, right? Like making it sure that again, making it clear that again, my face is in focus. Um, it's a lot easier to kind of show that story with, um, you know, the blurring of the foreground and the background. So it's a lot of this is, is hierarchy. It's telling story. It's making it clear what is far away from us, allowing us to easily tell that depth. And I found that again, thinking in terms of these concepts is very, very valuable, but it's not really all there is to say about how to make a good image. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. To do that, we'll jump straight over to the drawing table and we'll look at some examples, because I think that's one of the best ways to actually learn how all this stuff works. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Firstly, what I want to do is outline 
essentially just where we would use foreground, middle ground, background, and you know what we mean by this concept. So here you can see that I have an illustration. This is one that I created, and we can you know see a fairly good separation of, of foreground, middle ground, background. We have these kind of characters here, the little birds that are kind of darkened off, and the character itself might be considered to be you know on that sort of foreground layer. The next we would have a sort of cave that this guy's in could be sort of the middle ground and that might be sort of mixed with this uh, you know extra sort of bit of it that's kind of standing out here that this bird is on. And then the background would be these clouds and these mountains and, and that would be the sort of typical breakdown. Now this doesn't have to be something that is always cased in sort of realistic scenes. This is a cover for a comic book and it is an abstract idea. Although this scene kind of could exist, what we're really talking about is something that exists a little bit more in the realms of design. We have these kind of abstract elements um, and really it's trying to tell a story by kind of placing different things on the page and having them sort of coexist with each other. But still, the idea of depth and kind of making sure that we have some level of foreground, middle ground, background will help us create a sense of richness within the image. So what I would consider this as um, the, the foreground, middle ground, background in this image would be these kind of rocks and the sort of strange rocks that are part of the story that are kind of, you know, really sort of closer to the viewer. And this kind of frame, right, this layer of the foreground is kind of rising up and obviously sort of crossing over the character. The character is kind of what I would consider to be in the middle ground of the image, right? They are kind of the main focus. And then these other elements are what I consider to be in the background of the image. So again, in a lot of these things, what I'm doing is kind of making sure that the foreground is kind of framing my main subject, which is in the middle ground. And then that the background is also helping to frame the main subject, which is in the middle ground. You can see a similar idea here. This is essentially the same theory of image, but um, you know, with a different sort of character and obviously you know different composition. But here we have a much more exaggerated version of that foreground element where we have these same rocks. And um, this image, and I, I think there's another one in this series, a sort of a, a triptych of um, covers that all kind of have the same sort of feeling and mood. In this case, we have very, def very well defined foreground. And because it's not necessarily sort of rising up in front of her, what I'm doing is, again, pushing the sense of depth, right? So it's very clear through um, objects getting smaller as they recede into the distance that these rocks are in the foreground, right? There's perspective at play. She would be the sort of robot in the middle ground and then the planet is in the background. So same idea, just using a slightly different technique to make it clear that this is a foreground and that there's depth at play. Here we have the last cover in that series of three and it has a similar idea, although again, this one has a little bit of a simpler composition. We have some sort of elements in the foreground, but really we're just sort of talking about the character kind of sitting on these rocks that are kind of exploding upwards. And then we sort of have a background there. And it's almost that in this one though, there's a little bit more of a separation between the planet and the background than there are in some of the others. So again, this is actually a little bit more of a graphic two-dimensional image than some of those previous ones we saw. But the concept is still the same, and from an atmospheric perspective level, I'm trying to make sure that, again, some of these rocks that are kind of flying up, and certainly some of these elements that are sort of, you know, much more in the foreground are overlapping. So when you have something that is two-dimensional like this, it's really important to try and inject as much dimension as you can into it. So making sure that we have rocks overlapping rocks, overlapping rocks, overlapping the character, and then there are rocks behind. So again, not a formal foreground, middle ground, background, but a really, really nice sense of depth within the image. So which is why, again, it's very flat, but it does feel as if there's a lot going on, which again is the goal of this image. Okay, so one of the things that happens is if you are an aspiring artist, 
you are often sort of told these things, like make sure you have a foreground, middle ground, and background in your art. And I found that to be very true, as you've seen in the work that I've produced. It's something that I'm always trying to do. And I found it is a really simple thing to do to create interest in your work. But again, I think the ideas are a little bit more complicated than that. And the idea of sort of, you know, always do this or always do that is a little bit dogmatic. And I think we can add some sophistication and, and talk a little bit more about, you know, what you actually do. So one of the things that... Um, you'll find in a book like Creative Illustration is the concept that, again, overlapping line and areas um, is essentially the first principle of composition. So what that's sort of talking about is that often composition is about arranging things that are on top of things that are on top of things. And you can sort of think about this as foreground, middle ground, background a little bit more clearly if you are a, a landscape painter. So typically, if you look at where this advice comes from, you're going to see a lot more people talking about foreground, middle ground, background if they are environment painters for concept art, if they're painting landscapes, and that type of imagery. It's that type of imagery where, again, what you need to do is really, really formalize um, depth within the scene and, and sort of create story and order out of all this chaos of the kind of the natural world. Because in those instances... Most of the time what's happening is someone's literally going on, um, you know, a, a journey in their painting landscapes that are in front of them or using that as a major inspiration. So in that case, formalizing that and, and sort of trying to tell the story of depth, which is often a major part of landscape painting, it is so important that it becomes a primary teaching and a primary point of focus. But I think it's easier to view this idea of what we want is that we want overlapping line and areas um, and that that is going to be one of the most important things for creating a good composition and creating um, a good sense of sort of entertaining the eye let's see so one of the things i often like to do is try and test these theories and ideas that are often again sort of displayed dogmatically um, so if we do look at sort of Edgar Payne and his sort of landscape painting, again, you know, I think he is one of, you know, just the best landscape painters to ever live. You can see that there is obviously a really good sense of foreground, middle ground, background, and we can see these kind of elements sort of easily displayed. And he is doing what he suggests in his book, Composition um, uh, of Outdoor Painting. And... Again, I think you can sort of see that idea um, displayed in, you know, all of the art. There's, there's a really good sort of sense of that foreground, middle ground, background, right? Um, and that sort of shows the depth. And it makes you really feel as if you're there. So the bottom line in many of these cases is, and the, and the real takeaway is that, again, you apply these things and you focus on them more or less depending on what your subject matter is. Um, for landscape painting and again the more abstract your landscape painting the more you're going to want to you know focus on these these um, core ideas um, but again what we'll see is that not everyone is you know really heavily focusing on you know this kind of solid idea of oh you know we have to have a foreground middle ground and background again it works in some instances a great example I often like to talk about is uh, Robert E. McGuinness, who created a lot of sort of pinup art and, um, you know, sort of a lot of the Bond covers and those types of uh, subjects, right? And he did a lot of sort of, you know, almost direct tracing from photographs. So photography was a big part of his process, um, which is funny because, again, my entire sort of bent and what I'm talking about on this channel is drawing from imagination. But... Um, he often used a very different process, and yet I think his work is just so, so amazing. And here, what I want to highlight is just the sort of flatness of a lot of the compositions that you might see here. So it's often very sort of graphic, right? There, there's not a huge goal to kind of show depth within the frame, and yet there is depth within the frame. And that's where really what we're talking about with foreground, middle ground, background is overlapping shape. You don't necessarily have to formalize it as a landscape, right? Um, you know, we have trees in the foreground, you know, a house in the middle ground, um, mountains in the background. 
although if you are doing that that will help but you always need to pay attention to showing or telling the story as i like to say of depth within the scene and you can see here that is done through although there's not that much depth to it you can see that we have this mirror in the foreground and then we have the characters in the middle ground and we have this kind of subject in the background and there is an amazing amount of information that tells the depth within the scene and that really is what will create that sense of vibrancy and a feeling that the image is alive and vital that there's energy there because we are entertained by that for some reason and this really is the key here is that often what is happening is we're trying to entertain the eye and the eye likes depth if we look at frank frazetta as another interesting example someone i often like to bring up um, because i think they have a really really good sense of um, illustration and composition naturally you can see that again while there is obviously a good understanding and ability to create these simple you know sort of foreground middle ground you know background environments often you know the images that people are known to have responded to the most are actually very simple and are almost graphic or two-dimensional in their nature now we could sort of say that you know there is a background here and again it has a similar to what i was trying to achieve an abstract level of image making where the background is abstract and it's not like they're actually sitting in a scene and you could kind of say that you know oh perhaps there are kind of you know there is depth within this scene right but although there's a nice sense of overlap within the hands overlapping um, the belt and we can see all of these things happening it's also you know true that these things are kind of blending together and that while there is obviously a good sense of depth the image itself is almost graphic and two-dimensional in nature we really only have kind of one plane to work with and and you know that's just important to recognize as well even if we have some images that again show a lot more depth within that sort of one plane there's not a huge separation of the background and the foreground and the middle ground or any of these things often what you're dealing with is just a very very interesting and dynamic composition but there's not necessarily a huge sense of um, depth being told although obviously the you know minimum amount of work that's being done there is working really well what's happening instead is that the eye is being entertained with these interesting graphic shapes the feeling of aggression in the characters mirror neurons are activating and feeling the drama and danger here in the scene and that's why again despite not having that strong foreground middle ground background that you might academically think needs to be there the image has a sense of immediacy and it draws the eye you can also see some other examples where again there is more of you know a foreground middle ground background scenario and lots of complexity again there's a good sense of depth we're not necessarily feeling that there's a huge amount of depth here because even though these things are overlapping they're quite flat and we really are just sort of reading this main sort of middle ground environment there is a really good sense of overlapping shape of us kind of you know seeing the crocodile sort of lizard thing kind of move into the foreground we're seeing these kind of tentacles overlap the middle ground and we're seeing some sort of weird mass of writhing creatures in the background there is a really good sense of overlapping shape here but again keep in mind this is not the image that you know did the most damage in terms of eyeballs right um, it's really really well done but a lot of people did really enjoy some of those previous images that were more flat and static so again there's what will you know make good imagery there's what entertains the eye but then you've got to remember we're all human and if you can interact with what people care about and connect on a human level then that ultimately is going to create an image with more power and more audience retention in a similar vein you could look at someone like jc leyendecker who is you know regarded as one of the greatest illustrators to have ever lived certainly one of the most successful and you can see that again a lot of the imagery which has made them successful is you know much more simple and graphic and two-dimensional so while there is often a really good sense of depth and dimensionality to a lot of these images the things and the work which was you know actually kind of done 
creating all the classic Saturday evening post images is actually fairly two dimensional, right? It's dealing very much with sort of graphic, um, you know, sort of shapes. And even though that, again, there's not foreground, middle ground, background in all of those, they were very sort of effective and they told the story that they needed to tell. As with all good imagery, there is a really amazing sense of dimension and overlap that I think you'll find is sort of, you know, very, very hard to get away um, without. But again, even though the images feel like they're full of life and energy and movement, and they feel as if, again, there is a lot of depth there, there's not necessarily a really solid delineation between a foreground and a middle ground and a background in all of the images. Although I'm sure, again, there's many examples where Leyendecker would have created very, very impressive illustrations with a fully delineated foreground, middle ground, and background. So the main takeaway here is to really use a formalized sense of foreground, middle ground, background when you're trying to tell a story of depth. So again, if I'm drawing comics, I think this is a really good example because often I am needing to create some images that do have that sense of depth that kind of tell that story, obviously have a sense of foreground, middle ground, background. And other times, you know, it's just a matter of drawing a single character, a single thing with not anywhere near that amount of depth. What you need to focus on is understanding that people, for some reason, find this sense of parallax, right, of things overlapping things, overlapping things to be immensely interesting from a sort of basic compositional standpoint. So it doesn't really matter what type of imagery you're creating, the sense of um, one thing in front of another thing in front of another thing creates this kind of pleasing sense of overlap that the eye just seems to enjoy. Um, again, another great example by Robert McGuinness, where you have, you know, sort of things overlapping things, overlapping things, overlapping things, and there's this sense of depth that's very entertaining. Um, this is something that, again, probably harkens back to our evolution. We just like it. Um, one thing that you can do that I think is a really, really good example here is to use your phone to experiment with this because, again, it'll give you a really good sense of in what situation you need to use your, um, you know, compositional skills to, you know, maybe enhance things with foreground, middle ground, background, or maybe just try and create more overlap within the frame, even though the sort of dimensionality is not necessarily quite so, quite so wide. Um, just experiment and try and take photos that are interesting and notice when it really helps to frame your subject with a foreground, when you can sort of just focus on creating two-dimensionally pleasing images. And again, make sure that you remember the goal is always just to entertain the eye and that it seems one of the main things that we can do to that end is just to create overlapping shapes and make sure that it feels like we're telling a story of depth within our frame. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Hopefully this has been interesting. Um, just a little bit of a demo and a talk, looking at some images that have been created, some of mine, some of others. Let me know what you think of this, if this is interesting. If you've got any follow-up questions, let me know in the comments. I'd really, really like to hear your thoughts on this. Other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.